Peace to the 12, man. What's up? So, y'all see the title. Race is not a skin color. I repeat, race is not a skin color. And what I mean by that is to simply say, your skin color does not determine your race. Believe it or not, you know, and the reason why that's even controversial at this point is because in the modern society, particularly in American society, um, people's, people's ethnicity is associated by their skin color, right? For example, they use words like white, words like black, you know, which is kind of, which is dumb. And the reason why it's dumb, I, I used this example in my last video, is that uh, when you have a Asian person, right? An Asian person never calls himself um, yellow. He'll say, oh, I'm Vietnamese, I'm Chinese, I'm Japanese, or when they say the so-called red man, right? Which is what they try to throw on the North American Indian, really the, the so-called Indians, period. The Native Americans, they say red man, but they don't say that. They'll say, oh, I'm Comanche, you know, I'm Chickasaw, you know, so on and so forth. I'm Cherokee. They don't claim red, but when it comes to two particular groups, which would be the so-called white man and the so-called black man, in America, they claim white and black all the time, right? That's just what it is. But that brings me to this video, race is not a skin color. And this is really in response to a comment that I got from Makaba9461, right? And this comment reads, I highlighted the points that I'm going to get into. I believe this is a she, right? She says, the truth is nobody really knows the truth. White men have written books filled with speculation, theories, guesses, etc. I mean, I definitely agree with that. People globally read those books and never think critically, critically about what they read. I a thousand percent agree with that. They just take those theories as fact. Yep. You know, that's why uh, I had people, <laughs> a few of my comments on the last video, they, they, they didn't want to believe what I was saying on the fact that... Uh, Pale complexion is simply a mutation and not an evolutionary um, uh, predicament, right? I went over that. Y'all can go watch it. It was literally my last video. And I went into that and proved why I wasn't, but some people didn't want to deal with it. But that's, that's on them. Anyway, she said, who wrote that book that states certain melanated folk are different than others? Well, there are a lot of books that say certain melanated folks are different than others. But the book that I referenced, because I'm an Israelite, the Bible deals with nations right and we're going to touch on that word nation in a minute right so there are nations of people of various complexions all brown that are different nations and which means there are different ethnicities we'll get into that in a minute right one minute we actually know that uh esau folk are liars then we read their theories and see it as truth without investigation well no i don't if you i don't know if you're speaking about me or just people in general but if you watch that video there were certain things that I straight up said I didn't agree with. Like, for example, they said, oh, this this African branch branched out to Europe 64,000 years ago. I don't agree with those numbers. You know, <laughs> they just throw those numbers out there. It's not like I can go walk up to a man that was born 64,000 years ago and, and, and chop it up with him. You know, and, <laughs> you know, and then, of course, they use carbon dating, but carbon dating can be tampered with by water. Um, it can be it can be uh, the test can be messed up by water manipulation. Meaning what if water touches something, it can mess up the carbon dating period and things of that nature. But anyway, the European Renaissance was about lies, replacing ancient people's faces, skin tones, culture, and history with Europeans, all lies. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, for example, I've done videos on the Moors, and people are like, oh, the Moors ain't this, Moors ain't that. Any Latin dictionary from the 1700s will tell you that a Moor is a so-called black man, and the Moors ruled Andalusia, which is Spain, Portugal, and they were also all the way in places like Germany. Uh, you can even pick up a poem. I did a video on it, a poem called The Song of Roland. And The Song of Roland is a poem that was written about the conquest of Charlemagne, the failed conquest of King Charlemagne trying to go against Spain. And it was said that Spain had an army of 50,000 Ethiopians, which is just a fancy word of saying uh, black people because um, a lot of people called black people Ethiopians in that time period, which again proves that the Moors were in rule of Spain, right? But anyway... And then, of course, with the Renaissance, the Renaissance is talk, The Renaissance means rebirth, the word rebirth. And that simply goes into the fact that the Renaissance was the rebirth of the rise of Esau, the rise of the so-called white man, right? And I'll do a video on that in its own time. I'm kind of glancing over a lot of topics, and I will get into where I was going, but just bear with me. Um, the European Renaissance is about lies replacing ancient people's faces, skin tone, culture, and history with Europeans. All lies. Now she says, 
where Adam and Eve were Adam and Eve from Asia. Also, according to the Bible, humans came from them, one race in ancient times. That's what I want to touch on. One race in ancient times. The Bible deals with nations, right? And the word nation goes back to the word race, which I will prove in a minute. But first, let's get into it, right? So, I said nations. Because you have nations being born, and this proves that all nations were just various different shades of brown. And I don't know if I said this already, but these people on the screen, this is a Khoisan person from South Africa tribe. This is an African American with freeform dreads. This is a Sudanese man. And this is either a Dravidian or an Afro-Arabian. I'm not really sure. I got all these pictures on Google, right? Um, just for the thumbnail, I didn't really look into their backgrounds. But anyway, when you go to the nations being born, when you go to Genesis 10, in Genesis the 10th chapter where it gives you the children of Shem, the Hamite, it gives you the Shemites, the Hamites, and the Japhites, right, in Genesis 10. Then you go to Genesis 19, it gives you the Moabites and the Ammonites. Then you go to Genesis 16, it gives you the birth of Ishmael. You go to Genesis 25, it gives you the birth of Esau and Jacob, right? But when Jacob, Ishmael, Ammon, Moab, all the sons of Japheth, all the sons of Ham, and all the sons of Shem were born, when they were all born, their skin color was not mentioned. I bring this up all the time. You know why their color wasn't mentioned? The reason their color wasn't mentioned is because they were all melanated people. They were all different shades of brown, from light brown to dark brown, whether we're talking about a Chinese man, a Japanese man. A Polynesian, an Aboriginal Australian type dude, uh, the Khoisan people, or an Ethiopian, or an Indian to Dravidian of the South Asians, right? And there are South Asians out there of India uh, from India. They're all different. They're darker than me, right? They have darker skin complexions than me, right? Um, you got the Arab, the Arab man, different shades of brown from light brown to dark brown, right? Um, course african americans they got different skin colors african american skin varies in tones and shades from caramel almond hazelnut toffee java espresso ebony and deep ebony and these are just different shades of brown right and there's only one person of all the nations that were born we're going to touch on what a nation means and why i keep saying nation because it's dealing with ethnicity right a people group but every out of all these people their skin color was never mentioned when they were born except for one guy one guy's color was mentioned his name was Esau. That goes to Genesis 25 and 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And I've done videos on this in depth. But yeah, Esau was the only one that came out. And they said he came out red, right? Which means he was the only red looking one. Everybody else was a different shade of brown. That's why I get those guys who are like, no, Esau was a reddish brown, brother. That doesn't make sense because out of all those nations that were born, that were all melanated, you don't think they didn't have any reddish brown people? Of course they did. So the red it's talking about is like blood red, right? Like you can see the red through his skin, transparent light. That's what it's talking about. All right, now going back to the comment, uh, who says a certain melanated people? melanated folk are different than others first of all everybody is melanated everybody is melanated except for one people group that's it right except for one people group and what i mean that saying that is i mean that everyone is a brownish shade except for one group so it's no different than we look at like a dog species right there are many species of dogs that have black a black coat but they are not the same dog all right or when you look at a snake species you know i'm really into snakes um I'm really into reptiles in general. And they have like the vipers, the elapids, the colubrids, and the boa family, right? And none of these snakes uh, are the same type of snake. But you have black, you have uh, black mambas, right? You have uh, black rat snakes. You have uh, things of that nature. You have a green grass snake, a green boa, a green mamba. They might be all snakes, but they're not the same. And they have different family groups, like a viper or a lapid. Hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, yeah, all the table of nations were different shades of brown. And I'll probably do another video on this topic. I doubt this will be the only time I touch on this topic. But like I said, the table of the nations, everybody, everybody's color wasn't mentioned except for Esau, Edom. There's reason for that, right? Now let's touch on this word nation, why I keep using the word nation. So the word nation, for those who don't know, that means a race of people or a tribe. Nation, 1300, a race of people. Large group of people with common ancestry language. Race of people, tribe. Right? Meaning what? 
Nation means one's race in the original sense, right? Like in Genesis 25 and 23, when it's talking about the when uh, Jacob and Esau were in their mother's belly, this is what that this is what the seer told him. The seer is just a prophet. In Genesis 25 and 23, and the Lord Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Now, they told her that two nations were in their womb, meaning what? Two races, right? Two ethnicities, two nations of people. That's what that means, right? So I don't deal with, oh, you're brown, I'm brown, so let's go to town. No, it's not like that, man. What's your nationality? All right, what's your nation, right? And as you find out, with, uh, with me and all the others who are Israelites, we have been persecuted by people just as dark, dark, dark as us, if not darker than us, i.e. the Egyptians, right? Which I'm about to touch on. The Egyptians, they persecuted us for 400 years, right? So uh, they, they didn't they didn't look at it like, oh, you're black, I'm black, let's, let's hang it. That ain't how it worked, man. That's not how it worked, right? And we're not like the Egyptians, even though we have dark, we have uh, brown, brown complexions, especially the original Egyptians. I did a video on that. You can watch that video. It's called The Proof of Our Origins. I also touched on the original Egyptians in a video called Ancient and Modern Hebrews, where I went into that as well. Y'all can go watch those previous works for that. But I'm just going to get this scripture on Exodus 11 and 7. Proving that the Israelites and the Egyptians are not the same despite skin color. And we know that the Egyptians and the Israelites look the same because Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian. Joseph was mistaken for an Egyptian. And so was Paul. He was mistaken for an Egyptian. So whatever the Egypt, ancient Egyptians looked like, that would mean the Israelites looked exactly like the ancient Egyptians. And yet, we're going to see that we are not the same people and we are distinct and differentiated. This is Exodus 11 and 7. It reads... But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord Yahweh doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So though we have the same skin color, the Most High put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Right? Let's get out of the virgins. Distinction between Egypt and Israel. Distinction between Egypt and Israel. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's the same thing. We're different, right? So the Egyptians and the Israelites are not the same, right? That's that's just pretty simple. Um, and furthermore, these nations, whether they want to whether they want to agree with it or not, these nations as a whole, as a group, they they are our enemy. That's pursuing the Psalms 83. All right, according to Psalms 83, all these nations are against the children of Israel. I'm going to get Psalms 83, verse 1 through 8, which reads. A song or psalm of Asaph, keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Right? And we're going to find out that the enemies are heathen pursuing, are the heathen pursuing the Nehemiah 5 and 9. I'll get that in a minute. But he says, they have said, this is what our enemies say, after they take their crafty counsel. They have said, come. And let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So they don't want us to be back in power. They don't even want us to be remembered, right? That's why they want us to keep calling ourselves all these damn bywords, Dominican, black, um, uh, whatever, whatever other ways they say, uh, what they say, I'm uh, FBA, I'm damn ADOS. You know, they don't want us claiming that we're Israelites, even though we are, right? And that includes some of my, uh, that, not even some, that includes the Israelites that are scattered abroad, whether they're scattered in India, scattered in Africa, like West Africa, South Africa, scattered all throughout there, uh, scattered everywhere. The Israelites are scattered everywhere. But, um, yeah, they don't want us to come back to our nationality. All right, that's why it tells you in uh, Revelations that great fear fell upon them that saw us. Yeah, these people, these people are afraid of us coming back into our heritage because they have, put trillions of dollars into hiding our heritage you know i've done videos on that and i'll do videos on that in the future on how far they went to hide our identity but anyway they have said come let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of israel may be no more remembered it's actually i'll touch on that a little bit right that's why you have people claiming to be us that aren't us and that's also why there's a concerted attempt at trying to make eat trying to make it seem that egypt had people that always looked like arabs right so-called arabs 
um, that's why that's a common offense, even though they know, based on DNA, based on uh, busts of the ancient pharaohs, which I put on there before. Look up a look up Nefer Frey, Pharaoh Nefer Frey. Look up Pharaoh uh, uh, Narmer. They have so-called Negroid features, yet they run around with the lie that the ancient Egyptians have always looked how they look. That's just a lie, and they know it's a lie. But why do they do it? Because they consult together with one consent. They want us to not remember ourselves as a nation. They want you to think that, oh, if the ancient Egyptians look like Arabs, that means that the Israelites had to have looked like Arabs, right? Which is what the narrative they run with, right? But anyway, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may no more be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them, they have hope in the children of Lot Salah, right? So, it tells you right now that the nations are clicked up, right, as our opposition. The Edomites, Ishmaelites, Moabites, uh, the Hagarines are just more Ishmaelites, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistines, Ashur, they're all clicked up to, to keep, uh, to cut us off from being a nation that our name will never be remembered, right? In other versions, because someone could say, oh, it's talking about Edom. That no, it's talking about the group of people. In other versions of Psalms 83 6, it says, These Edomites and Ishmaelites, Moabites, and Hagrites. So they literally are to clicked up together against us. The people of Edom and the Ishmaelites, the people of Moab and the Hagar Hagarites, Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites. So they're clicked up, all right? And top ops, you see them. That's why they named them first Edom and Ishmael. Now I say that because what? Skin color is not one's race. I'm not with that at all. We, we're all melanated people. I'm not with that, man. Because they didn't care that we was melanated when they had the Arab slave trade. Right? They didn't care that we was melanated when they was uh, selling us to the so-called white man. They didn't care about that. All right? The, uh, when the uh, certain African tribes were selling us to the so-called white man, they didn't care that we was both melanated. Right? Which I'll touch on that later. But just to continue. Yeah, that's what I mean. And Gentile, heathen, and uh, the word Gentile, heathen, and uh, what was the other word? Nation. They're all interchangeable. But sometimes we go to the New Testament or even into the Old Testament, like we see the word stranger. It can be talking about a foreign-born Israelite. I just wanted to touch on that. But Gentile, nation, heathen. That's why heathen says one of a race or nation, which does not acknowledge the God of the Bible. None of these people do. And one of the races of the nation that's not an Israelite is what a heathen is. And uh, the heathens are all against us any damn way. That's Nehemiah 5 and 9. It's Nehemiah 5 and 9. Also, I said it is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. So the heathen are our enemies, right? Other versions of this same book, Nehemiah 5 and 9, it says, The nations, our enemies. All right? The heathen, our enemies. The nations, our enemies. Now, remember I told you that a nation... It's just another word of saying the word uh, race. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to it real fast. Where was it at? Nation, a race of people. So he said the heathen, our enemies. Well, in other translations, it doesn't say the heathen. It says the nations. And we ju I just told you what, the, what another word for a nation is. It's a people group, a tribal group. And they're all against us. That's why it tells you in 1 Maccabees chapter 2, I'll start at verse 7. All these nations have had a part in our downfall. And they didn't care that we were melanated. They didn't give a damn about it. Right? We go to First Maccabees chapter 2. He said, Woe is me. Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people? Right? And of the holy city and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers. Her temple has become as a man without glory. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. Her infants are slain in the streets. Her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation? Check this out. What nation? We, once again, the word nation means a people group, a race of people, a tribe. What nation had not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? So it's what this is what you call a rhetorical question because the answer is all of them have had a part. So what nation have not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? All her ornaments are taken away. Of a free woman, she has become a bond slave. Yet yeah, they steal from us, right? Uh, and behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory is laid waste. And the Gentiles have profaned it. 
Gentiles can be replaced with heathen. Heathen can be replaced with nations. Nations can be replaced with other tribal groups. They all had a part in our spoil. They've all stolen from us. They've all had us in slavery, right? And they've all uh, profaned our temple, right? They all profane our heritage in general, right? And they've all had a part of our spoils, right? We're talking the transatlantic slave trade, the Arab slave trade, right? For you Negroes that want to be damn uh, Muslims, right? The Arab slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. What's the Arab slave trade? The trans-Saharan slave trade. Most removed from sub-Saharan Africa to North Africa to be sold to the Mediterranean and Middle Eastern civilizations, right? Selling us to the so-called white man, selling us to other Ishmaelites. And that could go, etc. I'm actually going to do a video on this topic. Probably be one of my next videos, Lord willing. On how every nation has had a part in our downfall. And I'm going to go on these Moabites, these Ammonites, all of them. Because it's all historically re recorded, right? And it also proves that we're the Israelites because there's no other people group that have been persecuted by everybody like we have, man. Nobody else. Anyway, etc. Now let's go back to the other thing she said. Because I want to touch on Adam and Eve as well. She said, where Adam and Eve from Asia, also according to the Bible, humans came for them, one race in ancient times. So let's deal with Adam and Eve as well. Let's deal with Adam and Eve as well. Um, I made a statement that North Africa, parts of North Africa were also considered the Middle East. I think I did that in response to the comment. Let me just prove that real quick. I ain't going to go too much into that. But, um... It says the Middle East is a common term for a region consisting of countries in South, West Asia, and usually at least part of North Africa. So they include North Africa with the Middle East to answer that sister's question about that. So it's still considered the Middle East um, to certain people. Uh, North Africa is associated with the Middle East in a realm of geopolitics to form the Middle East and North Africa region. Right? Anyway, um... Let's deal with Adam and Eve and where they were from. Because she asked me where they from where they from Asia. Well, where was the Garden of Eden at? Well, the Garden of Eden, the people always say where is that, but uh I believe the Garden of Eden is the nation of Israel, and I'll explain that in a minute, right? Where the where where the land mass of Israel was in the land of Canaan. I'll explain that in a minute. And I might do a deep video on that in of itself. But we're gonna read Genesis chapter two, verse eight through fifteen real quick, and then I'll touch on why I say what I said. So this is Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. And glory how God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the glory how God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it. Which, comp with which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellum and the onyx stone. So that's the first river. And the name of the second river is Gion. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hadekil. That is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So, where Adam and Eve were located, right? You know, and I've done a video on uh, on Adam in the first. Uh, I've done a video on Adam before. Uh, I can't remember what the video was called, but I'll do another video on it any damn way. Uh, but if, if somebody asks me in the comments, I'll send them the link to the video I did. I'll find it. But, um, so we know... The general area of where the Garden of Eden was at based on the four rivers that it gave us. Pison, first river, second river, Gion, third river, Hedek Hill, fourth river, Euphrates. Meaning it has to be in the center of those four rivers, right? The first is Pashon. We went over that. The first river is Pashon. Uh, I looked at where Pashon was at. And it said, or no, I don't have to look at where Pashon is at because I looked up the entire land of Havilah. Well, where is Havilah? Havilah is, the biblical Havilah today is the Sudan. Havilah is the Sudan, right? So that's one place. And what river go, And what river goes through the Sudan? The Nile. The Nile goes through the Sudan. It's composed of two tributaries, the White Nile and the Blue Nile. 
uh, the White Nile reaches all the way to Sudan, right? So let's go to Genesis 2 and 13. The other one, it went through the land of Cush. So it would be the river that goes through Ethiopia, right? The entire land of Ethiopia. Um, right? Um, and that's what it told you here. You have the White Nile and the Blue Nile. Where was it at? Where the Blue Nile begins near Lake Tana in Ethiopia, right? So there's some rivers there. Notice those two places I just named are in Africa. But the other places are in the Middle East. Or the so-called Middle East. Because the Middle East is a New Age term, by the way. I might do a video on that as well. But let's go to the other places. The third river. The third river is the, uh, I think it said Hedekiel. But that's really talking about the Tigris. That's why in other versions it says the Tigris. The Tigris flow at least in the land of Ashur. So the Tigris. So the third river is the Tigris. Where is the Tigris located? The Tigris River is located in southwestern Asia. All right. It's sourced in the eastern tourist mountain range in Armenia. And the river flows through the countries of Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. The river is part of the Syrian-Turkish border. So we got two rivers that are in Africa. Now we got a river that's in southwestern Asia. And the other, and the fourth river was where? In the Euphrates. The fourth river was the Euphrates. Where is the Euphrates located? The Euphrates begins in Turkey and courses down through the modern countries in Syria and Iraq. So that is the Euphrates, right? And let me say something, make mention of something in the Euphrates. To you New Testament deniers, to you New Testament deniers, you guys have some explaining to do. Because why does it tell you in the New Testament that the river Euphrates would dry up? Right, we go to Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the river Euphrates is going to dry up. So the so the really it's dealing with World War III. When World War III kicks off, the river Euphrates will be dried up so that tanks and vehicles can just cross over there, no problem. All right, that's that's according to prophecy. Now, it says that the Euphrates River will dry up in Revelation 16 and 12, which is a prophecy. But when you know in real life, in real time, the Euphrates River is drying up. It says, the Euphrates River is at risk of drying up due to climate change. That's not why. It's due to the Most High. It's due to the Ahabashim Shai. But it says, the Euphrates River is at risk of drying up due to climate change. Temperatures in northeastern Syria have risen by 1 degree Celsius compared to 100 years ago. Average rainfall has decreased by 18 millimeters per month per century. The Iraqi Ministry of Water Resources warns that the river could be dried up by 2040. All right, I keep trying to push the number up because I believe when I did a video on this before, it was 2030. So now it's 2040. But point is, the Euphrates River is drying up, just like the New Testament said it would, right? So you New Testament deniers, you got some explaining to do. Now that being said, the reason I said that I believe that the Garden of Eden was really located in the... Uh, landmass of the Israelites in the land of Canaan given to the Israelites the reason I say that is based on other verses in the Bible that talks about how the land of Israel is the best place to be at even though currently it's a desert why is it a desert because it's being occupied by Amalek right it's being occupied by Amalek and Esau and it's being occupied by Ishmael as well but well you know I've done videos on that already so this is why I say that the land of Israel is where the Garden of Eden was at. So we go to Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 6. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had an espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, meaning it's the best of all the lands, right? And he brought us from where? He brought us from the land of Egypt, right? Now it says the glory... Of all lands and other versions of Ezekiel 20 and 6. It says the most beautiful of all lands, right? The most beautiful of all lands. The best of all lands anywhere. That's another version. Most glorious of all lands. Glory of all lands. So the best of all lands, the most beautiful of all lands. And that land was what? The land of the Israelites. Israel. Right? That's also in Genesis 15 and 18. Right? Uh, Genesis 15 and 18 says in the same day the Lord Yahweh made a covenant with Abram saying unto thy seed have I given this land now check this out now this is how you know it's talking about 
the land of Israel, because this was the land that was given to them. And this is also a key that goes back to Genesis 2, when it was talking about the four rivers. In Genesis 15 and 18, it says, In the same day, the Lord Yahweh made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed, who is his seed? Through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So the land from the river of Egypt to the land of the river Euphrates. Doesn't that go back to right here, the fourth river, Pishon, Gion, Hedekiel, Euphrates, Euphrates, Tigris, the Nile River, right? Isn't that what it's talking about? Because that was the land man's given to his seed, right? So from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates, that's the promise that was given to Abram into his seed, which would be the Israelites. That's why I tell you the Garden of Eden was in that location. That pretty much proves it right there. Now, for the last part that she said, before I get out of here, I'm going to answer this as well. I'm going to answer this as well. Where I mean from Asia. Also, according to the Bible, humans came from them. One, one race in ancient times, right? One race, right? And through that one group of people, you get many nations with our many races, right? But anyway, did we all originate from Adam and Eve? Yes, we did. But that doesn't mean anything. Let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 6 and 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So it is true that through Adam, we all come from Adam, right? That is true. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Who has the Lord chosen unto himself? The Israelites, right? The chosen people. Now let's read this in full context. Let's read uh, 2 Ezra 6 and 54. And let's find out if we're all the same in one race. And we're all... No, 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 no. Let's go to 2 Ezra 6 and 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So the world was made for our sakes, the Israelites. Now check this out. This is talking about the other people that come from Adam. We're talking about one race? No. As for the other people, this is 2 Ezra 6 and 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and as like in the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So the mo they, these other people are nothing in comparison to the Israelites according to the eye in the eyes of the Most High, right? But they also come from Adam. That doesn't mean anything. Now check this out. Even though they were reputed as nothing, now they're lords over us, right? Because we're at the very bottom. And now, verse 57. I'm going to read this again. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said they are, that they are nothing but be like on the spittle, and as like in the abundance of them, unto a drop to fall from a vessel. And now, 2 Ezra 6 and 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which goes back to the word nations, these Gentiles, these strangers, these heathens. Behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. So though they were reputed as nothing, eyes and most high, they have become to be lords over us and now they devour us. Why? Because we've broken out of the covenant that we made with the most high. That's why we had to go through all these curses, right? But then you read Deuteronomy 30, it tells you that after we go through the blessings and the curses, we're going to go back and we're going to end up in the kingdom. That's a whole breakdown of itself. But... These other nations, they begin to be lured over us. They, they don't care about the melanin, right? See, a lot of our people, they're always stuck on melanin. Let me tell you something. They don't give a damn about melanin, man. They don't <laughs> They didn't give a damn about melanin when they were selling us to all our enemies, right? When they took part of our spoils. Let's go back to 1 Maccabees. Because it said these heathen have been, have, that, that's where Peter is nothing, have begun to be lords over us. That goes back to 1 Maccabees. What nation has not had a part in her kingdom and gotten her spoils? That's 1 Maccabees 2 and 10, right? They all took a part. Right? They all made us bond slaves. We were given to the sword of our enemy. And they all took part of it. Right? They even took counsel together. Psalms 83. But, um, yeah, they were repeated as nothing. Now their Lord's over us and devour us. Uh, and for us to say, oh, I don't believe in the apocrypha, brother. Well, let's go to Isaiah 40 and 17. Tell you the same thing. Isaiah 40 and 17. All nations before him 
are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity right let's get other versions of this same thing isaiah 40 and 17 before him all the nations are as nothing the nations of the world nations of the world key word meaning the other nations the nations of the world are worth are worth nothing to him god thinks of the nations as far less than nothing the nations are nothing at all to him absolutely nothing nothing yeah 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 see that that's isaiah 40 and 17 but they get, and then you got these clowns right they'll say oh it means all nations including the nation of israel it's not talking about the israelites because the most high views the israelites as special to himself or as special to him let's prove that israel is unlike other nations let's go to amos chapter 3 and verse 1 this is amos 3 and 1 hear this word that the lord yahweh has spoken against you O children of israel against the whole family which i brought up from the land of egypt check this out saying you only have i known of all the families of the earth Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Most High knew us on a personal tip. That's why it says, you only have I known to who? The children of Israel. Then you go to Jeremiah 51 and 17, where it reads, Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in him. Right? So every man, meaning the other nations, are brutish in knowledge. Right? And they're confounded by the graven image. All these other nations, they... Pray to statues, sticks, damn images, paintings, uh, totems, all form of madness. They're brutish in nature. The word brutish means animalistic in knowledge. So every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his voting image is falsehood, and there's no breath in him, right? Meaning they're all fake, false gods, fake, false idols. They are vanity. Vanity meaning they are worthless. The work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Right? Let's talk about every man. But it's going to distinguish one man. That's the Israelites. Verse 19. The portion of Jacob, meaning the portion of the Israelites, is not like them. For he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Right? So when Israel gets back in rulership, the Lord's going to give them the power to break in pieces kingdoms and nations. Right? All the people that crossed us. Right? That's get back. That's um, judgment. Right? That's balance, according to the Most High. Because the Most High is a just God of balance. Right? And we are a holy people. We're not like everybody else. That's in Deuteronomy 7. That's in the law, right? In Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord Yahweh thy God. The Lord Yahweh thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. It says what? Above all the people on the face of the earth. Why? Because they have melanin. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right? Special people unto himself. Who? The Israelites. Deuteronomy 14 says the same thing. And we're a holy people. Deuteronomy 14 says the same thing. Deuteronomy 14 and 1 through 2. Ye are the children of the Lord, Yahweh your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any bondage between your eyes for the dead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord, Yahweh thy God. And the Lord, Yahweh hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations. Right? Again, uh, he has... Uh, Made us a special people above all the nations. See that? That's supremacy. Right? That's a hegemony. That's another word. Hegemony. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 16. Let's get other scriptures proving that we're chosen and unlike the other nations just to bring home. When it's talking about all nations to him, there's nothing. It's talking about all the other nations aside from Israel. Let's go again to 1 Chronicles 16 and 13. Because we are the chosen. It says that all throughout the Bible. First Chronicles 16, 13. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So the Israelites are the chosen ones, right? The Israelites are the servants of God. First Psalm, or excuse me, go to Psalms 135 and 4. For the Lord Yahweh have chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. We are that peculiar treasure. And he chose Jacob unto himself. Who? The Israelites. Who did that? The Most High God, Yahweh. Isaiah 41 and 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. The seed of Abraham, my friend. 
the seed of Israel, the Israelites are the chosen. Isaiah 44 and 1. Yet, now hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I have chosen. So it's the Israelites whom are chosen. When I do these videos, I tell you guys this all the time. All the videos I do are really only for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's it, right? And the 12 tribes of Israel that I speak to, it's not based on what they look like. It's based on their seed line. Does their seed line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? If that is the so, then, then, then they are my brother. And most of my brothers are bugged out. Most of my brothers want me... <laughs> want us uh, view us as the enemy all right they view the israelites as the enemy but they still are my brother nonetheless but that's the only thing my videos are good for the 12 tribes of israel scattered in everywhere scattered in europe america asia africa scattered everywhere the israelites scattered abroad right um and we are the apple of the lord's eye it's gonna be the last scripture i get zechariah 2 and 7 Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. And the daughter of Babylon is really talking about we're dwelling with the Edomites. Because the, the Edomites are known as the daughters of Babylon. That's pursuing the Psalms, chapter 137, verse uh, 7 through 9. Right? Where it says, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Then it says, O daughter of Babylon. Meaning the daughters of Babylon are linked with the children of Edom. So when you go to Revelations, and it's always talking about Babylon the Great. That Babylon is talking about is the Edomite Empire, which is, once again, the Edomites. Who is that? So-called white man. But anyway. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwells with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. See these nations, they spoiled us. Tells you that again. For he that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of his eye. Right? So we are the apple of the Lord's eye. We are, we, we are, uh, we are uh, loved by him. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. He shall know that the Lord Yahweh of hosts hath sent me. So the same nations that spoil me, hey, they're going to get spoiled, man, right? And they don't get no hall pass because they got damn melon. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord Yahweh. You know, so that's it. We're the apple of the Lord's eye. He views us as special. Yeah, we all come from Adam, but that don't mean nothing, right? And all these nations have had a part in our spoil, and they didn't care that we had melon in like they did. They didn't give a damn about that, right? So hopefully that answers a lot of questions. And that goes back to the begin the point of this video, which is that race is not a skin color. So I'm pretty much done here, man. And with that, I, once again, I say peace to the 12. And I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who is commonly known as God. Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel, who is commonly known as Jesus Christ. I want to say, a shout, I want to say shout out to the people listening and learning. You brothers doing this work, truth and sincerity, and to you elders that's been doing this thing before me. I'm out. Peace.